I think one of the problems that a lot of the American people have uh, with bailouts and with this legislation is that they feel that after these firms fail or are propped up by the U.S. taxpayer, that take billions of our taxpayer dollars, then the CEOs and the board members drive off in their Austin, Aston Martins uh, to their $20 million houses in the Hamptons with their $500 million in the bank, and there's no accountability whatsoever. Is there anything in this bill that provides any personal accountability for these CEOs? Before I answer that, let me uh, refer back to something uh, Senator Brown said. I, uh, nobody pulled me back from negotiations. Uh, the fact is that uh, Senator Dodd, and he said this publicly, left me at the altar. And the reason was, as we negotiated, uh, Democrats were being lost. And I think he wanted to get the bill out of committee on a party line vote. I mean, he has stated that publicly. So nobody has pulled me back. I'm my own person, and I want to get a good bill here, but back to the question you're asking, there's no question, and I think that, uh, first of all, I plan to offer uh, changes to this resolution authority that say that if an, a large entity like this has to go through this resolution, where in essence they're liquidated in an orderly way, I think that everything that the executive team and the board members have earned through this company over the last five years needs to be clawed back. In other words, there needs to be uh, some penalties assessed to, uh, to the management that, is ca that have caused the country to have to go through this orderly liquidation process. So absolutely, I will be offering an amendment that deals with that so that we're taking back, we're clawing back uh, all the earnings that management has made out of this firm if it has to go through orderly liquidation. I think that's very appropriate and certainly uh, I'm going to be doing that on the floor if it doesn't make it into the base bill. Austin, can the White House get behind that clawback provision? Well, or are you the, being outpopulated by now, Republicans? The, the president went to Cooper Union uh, this last week to revisit the spot where more than two years ago he went and said we need to have fundamental reforms. But there's no clawback the in this bill. Thing. There's a requirement that they're all fired. If you get to that point, all the management is so fired. So they take their $500 the million dollars to their homes in the Hampton. They take well, the look, the, w as I say, on any details, we're open to looking at the negotiate at negotiating the details of how we carry out the president's principles. But if negotiation and Senator Corker, to his credit, is not in this camp, but if the negotiators are going to come forward more as a delaying tactic, and we're just going to put in hundreds of amendments and try to keep this going so as to stall, delay, and kill reform. That's not going to happen. Okay. This is going to pass. One of the big. Uh, let, me, let, one, let, let, me, let me let me just move on to another subject, if I if I could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but we will get back to you, Senator Corker. The, one of the big debates going on within the Democratic Caucus is how strong the derivative legislation should be. Derivatives are these uh, risky uh, bets that uh, big money men. Uh, and women make on whether or not uh, an industry will rise or fall in value, uh, the, and it's a way to, to hedge a lot of risk. Uh, Senator Brown, uh, you are in favor of Senator Lincoln's provision, Blanche Lincoln from Arkansas. She wants to say, if you're a bank and you have federally insured money, you have to separate these derivatives traders. It's too risky what they do. We should not have any connection with taxpayer uh, insured money. Uh, do you think that the Democrats are going to put that in the bill? And if not, why not? Well, I hope so, and I think so. I, I, this goes back to the, really, to your first question on the conflicts of interest in Wall Street, that you really, you really can't serve two masters. You can't serve your clients and serve yourself uh, and play these transactions one off against another. And I, I think that these, anything we do in this bill, whether it's a consumer protection, I stand alone, I hope, at the Consumer Protection Agency, uh, whether it's regulation derivatives, whether it's too big to fail, whether it's the Volcker rule separating out proprietary trading and, and uh, as, 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 from, from uh, standard banking, uh, banking practices, any of those conflict, conflicts of interest we have to address in this bill. And I think that, I think that Senator Lincoln and her draft in the Agriculture Committee that we voted out um, last week, we got uh, one Republican supported it, Senator Grassley did. Um, and I think that was a good sign. I think it means that, that there will be a number of Republicans that are as open-minded as Senator Corker that will want to move forward Monday night. And again, just to let us begin the debate, I mean, the Monday vote is going to be, are we going to start the debate or are we going to shut it down and continue negotiating, negotiating, negotiating? I, I, to me, the legislative process is you put a bill on the floor and then Bob Corker offers his amendment that I like that he just mentioned um, in terms of when, in the resolution authority, what you do with these executives that brought us 
else there. I offer my amendment on, 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 uh, too, on too big, to fail means too big. Uh, dozens of other amendments will be offered. We'll see what happens, and then we vote a bill. Uh, Austin, can you get behind uh, Senator Lincoln's provision to separate derivatives trading from banks that uh, uh, have federally insured deposits? The, if you take a step back, it, uh, this issue of derivatives is totally central. Now, three years ago, virtually no one in America had even heard of derivatives, or if they had, they, they had nightmares of their you know, college math class or something. The fact is that there are now $600 trillion of derivatives that are trading in the dark that we know virtually nothing about and are unregulated. And it's not just a, a party that's taking place on Wall Street that, that has no impact on America. They're exactly the things that threaten to blow up the entire financial system with AIG. So the president's completely committed that we're going to bring the $600 trillion out into the open and under the regulatory umbrella. Now, I think it was we made great progress that in both the Dodd and Lincoln's versions of what would happen with derivatives, we purged a bunch of the loopholes that some of the banks had gotten put into the bills before. The president is not going to allow putting loopholes in that, that let these $600 trillion get back into the dark and threaten the whole system. But we can work on the, so the, but you guys, the, you guys don't, don't support, you guys don't Lincoln. support separating it though, right? Well, look, there, there are several very technical aspects of difference between the Lincoln bill and the Dodd it's bill. It's not really actually that technical. But it's whether I, I or not commercial, with that. it's whether or not commercial banks uh, <laughs> should, should ha be able well, to do this. Senator well, Parker, I hear you it's, giggling. It I mean, depends you, if it's you think Senator Lincoln's provision goes a little too far, right? Senator Corker, are you talking to Corker? Yeah, yes, of course, Senator yeah. Corker. Yeah, I mean, I think what all, I think what Austin's saying is he doesn't support it, and and I don't either. I let me say this: I want to see as much traded through clearing houses as possible. I absolutely agree that uh, that that needs to occur. We don't want to force those things that are not liquid to be traded on a clearing house. But I'm on the I'm on the side of let's get as much as possible. The fact is that. Senator Brown's in a state where a lot of manufacturing uh, takes place. I'm in a state where a lot of manufacturing takes place. And what people don't, I think, appreciate so much is that all of these tools are used for capital formation. They help uh, companies uh, hedge their risk. They help companies uh, create capital. And I think if we start drawing lines in the sand where we take these tools away, what we really do is hamper companies' ability to access capital. So I, I don't think separation uh, is appropriate. I do think clearing as much as possible so that on a daily basis, if somebody is money bad, they have to put money up to be money good or neutral so that we don't end up in the kind of situation we have with AIG. But I think it hampers our ability, again, to create great companies if we just create an absolute separation. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. It was a great debate, and I really thank you, Senator Corker in Chattanooga, Senator Brown in Cincinnati, and Austin Goolsby here in the studio. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.